Hi, ladies. Get ready to move your boomsy. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Mind Your Business. This is my weekly video podcast in which I get to talk about business so that we can all learn more about business, create wealth, and impact people. And just in case you are new here, sometimes I interview people, sometimes I come and jab, jab, jab alone, all in the hope of helping us all to do business better. Now, today on Mind Your Business, I get to interview a very fabulous, super, super, super fabulous woman named Kukwa. She is amazing. Look, even before I read her bio, she is 63 years old. It's so not real how fit she is. And she's such an inspirational human being. And I feel so privileged that I get to meet and talk to such fabulous women. So I'm just going to read her bio. I have actually shortened this, but like there's so much more to hear than even what I'm going to read. So Kukwa is founder and CEO of Kukwa Fitness, Africa with us and Africa with us foundation. Born and raised in Ghana, West Africa. She has been dancing since the age of three and dance is an integral part of her life, especially African dance. She's the mother of two daughters who work with her, Coach Cass and Coach Sam. Kukwa is also a dance fitness consultant, dance choreographer, personal health trainer, author, and African travel curator. She can say she's ageless, I agree, full of life and energy and continue to move her boomsy in her sisters, feeling like 30s, motivating and encouraging others to live their best lives through health and fitness, the Kukwa way. She certifies, she certifies instructors around the world, either via online or live workshops, teaching her brand of fitness and curating trips to the continent of Africa and the diaspora with her daughters, Coach Cass and Coach Sam. Endorsed by Oprah, Ooh, the old magazine, Essence and People magazine, Kukwa is a certified health fitness professional with American Council on Exercise, that's the ACE and has earned international acclaim as the originator of the Jinyami African Cultural Dance Company and creator of the Kukwa Fitness African Dance Workout Program. She's also an acclaimed author of four books entitled African Health Secrets, African Dance with Passion, Kuwa Inafa, and Kuwa Binzuri. Bizuri, Kuwa Bizuri, that's the word that can be found on Amazon and Amazon Kindle. Ladies, get yourself a kappa. Oh, sorry, did I just say ladies? Ladies and gentlemen, get yourself a kappa, sit and enjoy. Oh, and actually get your, grab your notebook and pen because I promise you, you'll learn a lot in this episode of Mind Your Business. Thank you so much, Kukua, for making time to be on Mind Your Business. I am sure you know already that you are one of the most super fabulous Ghanaians that we've got. Well, now I don't know whether you are American or Ghanaian, but we are <laughs> claiming you unashamedly. <laughs> Thank you so much for making time to be on the show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. And honestly, I am a Ghanaian first. I am a Ghanaian first and foremost. I'm proud to be a Ghanaian and on top of it, a Fanti girl. Oh my God, no crown Fanti. Oh, Dama. Oh, Nini Makra. Oh, I don't. Thank you so much. So now, speaking about you as a Fanti girl, tell us who you are, who Kukwa is growing up, you know, in Ghana way before you left. Tell us about how life was like for you. Yeah. So I grew up here. I grew up in Ghana and uh, my dad was in the military. And so I grew up literally in the Burma camp. Okay. Uh, I was a, I was a army brat, if, they, if you know what that saying is, you know. So I was a, a army kid and um, my father was also a uh, reverend oh. in yeah, so Reverend Colonel was his title. Mm -hmm. And so I was raised strict, if, if, if that makes any sense yeah, to you. Yeah. In the sense where, you know, you want to move your boomsy, uh-uh-uh, you know. <laughs> so 
So I was raised where I went to school. I had seven siblings. I'm sorry, six siblings, including me, seven. And five girls and two boys. And we were all raised here. I am number two of the seven. And uh, so I'm big sister, yeah. you know, sister yeah. yeah, sister Kukwa. <laughs> and then I have an older sister, of course, uh, before me, I'm number two. Mm-hmm. Uh, but uh, raising, raising us in the Burma camp, as you remember, Ghana was British colonized. Yes. So, so because of that, we did all the British things, quote unquote, like horseback riding, swimming, you know, cricket, rounders. Uh, I mean, we were privileged to, to get yes, to do, I know. <laughs> you know, plus being a Ghanaian, being in, in, in uh, Ghana, being raised in Ghana at the same time. So that was my life. Mm-hmm. And then when dad um, retired, we moved to Laboni. Okay. And, yeah. And then so, you know, the raising continued there. And at the age of 16, I decided that I had something bigger in life than just being my mom and dad's daughter. Mm. And that I wanted, I always used to tell my siblings, uh, I had a nickname, by the way, I didn't, I mean, my kukwa was kukwa, but I had a nickname, you know, when uh, somebody is in the movies and I had this, this vision of me being somebody else and I named myself Suzuki. Hey, <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know where the Suzuki came from, but I did. <laughs> and my family used to say, <laughs> you know, in fact, I would the mabu I would the mabu You know, and I always would be a Suzuki. If you do something and you call me Kuka, I said, no, 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 no. Suzuki, Suzuki, correction, you know, <laughs> because I felt like <laughs> I was somebody else, wow. you know. And so at the age of 16, uh, I left home and moved to the Ivory Coast okay. after after college, after, I mean, high school, after mm-hmm. I was done with high school. Uh, it was one of the long vacations, okay. you know, uh, summertime, as they call it, long vacations. And I decided to go to the Ivory Coast with my friends. And the reason is because I'm, I'm a linguist by birth. I say that because I can pick up languages very quickly and, and very easily. Kind of anointed. Yeah, there we go. Anointed. Yes, yes. I claim that I received that. Anointed. Yes. So I I spoke French at the age of three. I started speaking wow. French at the age of three. Now, once upon a time, and now I speak Gantri and Fanti fluently, I used to speak Hausa and Eve. Yes, wow. when I live here fluently. Wow. Now, I've been gone for a while, yes. and the two languages I don't speak much of over there in the U.S. is the Hausa and Eve. Okay. But the Chiga and Fanti, I speak. I have people who I can still speak with. And my family, of course, we speak the Fanti, you mm-hmm. know. But um, I, uh, I'm somebody who decided that I, wa- I think Ghana was too small for me. I wanted to expand that. I thought that there was something more out there than just Ghana. So I went to the Ivory Coast and I went to the Lycée there and the university there. And I worked at the American embassy there doing translations for them. And so uh, I did that for seven years. And then I transferred from there to Paris. I went to Paris. Mm-hmm. Your flight. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I sort of took my French route, you know, mm-hmm. and French came easily for me. I felt comfortable speaking French, even than English as, as mm-hmm. it was, you know. So I took my French route and continued my university in, in Paris. And then uh, I worked, the American embassy transferred me there. So I got a job and I was working there as well. So I stayed there between four to five years also in Paris. And then from there, I went to the U.S. But for me, my horizons were bigger. Still thinking Suzuki, and then the last name I put there was Wally. Suzuki (laughs) Wally. I don't know where I came up with that name. Oh my God. <laughs> yeah, Suzuki Wally. The other day, my cousin said, the Suzuki, Suzuki Wally, I want him far. <laughs> I, I, I mean, you are such a global brand now. So I guess you, you were born ready. You always yeah. knew that you were going to go yes. places. Yes, yes. I, mean, I had a vision. I had this, this mindset of there's something bigger beyond Ghana. There is something bigger. And I 
was meant to do something bigger. My whole thing was I was meant to reach and touch so many people. Mm-hmm. Now, remember, it wasn't fitness then for me. It was not then. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't fitness that I was moving in my mind, even though I've been dancing since the age of two, wow. you know, but fitness wasn't in my mind. And growing up in Ghana, fitness wasn't really the thing if you know what I'm saying. So everybody in Ghana is about what? Education. Mm -hmm. So my parents wanted me to go to school. They wanted me to get an education, to graduate. And I did that, you know, and I got my linguistics degree. So I am, you know, I'm a linguistics, but, and I worked, ended up working at the World Bank, you know, and yes, I worked at the World Bank and got affiliated with the UN as well, doing the translations in Paris and New York and and places like and Washington DC you know I'm so just imagining your life it must be so beautiful these different <laughs> countries different um organizations how is it yes life? yes 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 and then when I when I realized that the world was bigger in the fact that there are how many countries we have in the world then my goal in my mind was I have to get there I have to reach out to that world. I have to touch every single place, you know? And so my vision and my desire to do this was huge. So you can only imagine uh, my path to, to get to do this. You know, in the meantime, I'm not thinking children, marriage, I wasn't, no, I was thinking my mission, (laughs) I've got to reach out to people. So then I was doing the linguistics and doing my job and I wanted to uh, actually further my translation into interpreting. So I wanted to go to an interpreting school in Switzerland. I found an interpreting school in Switzerland I wanted to go to. But then by that time, this passion inside of me is burning and tagging me. I want to dance. I want to dance. I want to dance. I want to dance. I'm like, why? What is this? And so, you know, I'm starting to do uh, dance performances wherever I am. I'm forming troops. I'm getting to meet drummers in different countries. I'm putting, you know, drum uh, um, what do you call it? Um, uh, groups together. Uh, yeah. 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 I'm putting drum, drum groups together. I actually even had my own drum uh, ensemble called Jinyami Jinyam. African Cultural Dance Company because without God, yes. nothing, none of this is possible. Yes. So I sort of gave him the glory by giving him that name. And I started that in the U.S., And uh, it went places. It went from, you know, Washington, D.C. to New York to, oh, gosh, like different states, you know. And uh, and to this day, I still have the troupe. So if I need to perform, I do perform. But in the States, you know, now if I came to Ghana and I wanted to form a troupe, I can find drummers and and do it today. Now, that said, I also have my family in Cape Coast who are the little children that are growing up in my family there, who are also doing the drum and dance. And they have also called their troupe the Jinyami Jinyami. Africa. (laughs) So I support them. Fantastic. I mean, as you're speaking, I'm just picturing your life and I'm journeying with you. And it just sounds so (laughs) Like straight from a movie, it's not real, you know. Oh my gosh, you have lived and you are still living. Now let's yeah. talk about the dancing and you forming Kupa Fitness. How did this start for you? Okay, so then I went from Paris to United States, and when I got to the United States, then I'm going to shock you, Jane Fonda was teaching yeah jane oh, fonda. Fonda. give me my young self who, who oh. <laughs> oh, okay jane fonda was jane fonda was the well-known fitness guru in the united in the states US at that time. in the u.s at that time and she was wow. worldly known and well known because she was also an actress okay you know? So she, people knew her. And then uh, Richard Simmons, if that name also rings a bell, he also was in that era, another popular, uh, you know, artist and, um, you know, a fitness guru in the US as well. Yes. So those were the times, those were the days because 
by my age, you know, if you are younger, you wouldn't know, of course, right? Exactly. But they, got there, they were doing these jumping jacks and getting people to work out. And I saw no dance, N- none at all. All exercises. It's all yeah. exercise and all this up and down and boring. stretching. May I say? And boring <laughs> stuff and the music they were using. And I said, okay, why doesn't somebody do something? And then I said, hold on a minute. Hey. Why can't I do it? <laughs> so I started, I was then working at in Washington DC at the World Bank. And I started teaching during the my lunch break. I would teach in the fitness center and I would be playing African music and teaching them that cultural dances mixed with fitness. Mm-hmm. I sort of married the two together. Then I didn't even call it Kukwa African dance. No, then it was Lo Physique. Le physique meaning the core, because you know, I'm all French here. Yeah, so everything, yeah. <laughs> so it was all le physique. And I mean, people would come, I'm going to le physique. Oh, I've got to hurry up. I'm going to go work out. I'm going to oh. le physique. It just grew. Male and females were coming to my classes. At one time, I had 40 people in the class at lunchtime. They Whoa. would put away their lunch and come to move their boomsy. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll tell you about that. And come to move their boomsy with me. So I started at the World Bank. Then I went to the IDB, the OAS, all the international organizations in Washington, D.C. Because that's where I lived. And so I started teaching all these international organizations who understood international music, exactly. open-minded to international exactly. affairs, right? So yeah. I, I they, were, they accepted me more. And then the gyms heard about me and I started knocking on doors of the gyms and they opened it wide. They would say, come and do a demo and five people might come and the next day, 50 people were in the class, like, whoa. So at one time I was teaching seven classes a day. Why do you find the energy? I don't know. I don't know. The only thing I know, glory to God, he gave me that energy because I did not know where I was getting my strength from, but from him, because I wasn't taking anything physically. I wasn't even doing any of our Ibibidru kind of thing, taking neem or what. No, none of that. None of that. I was just going for it. And I used to do the seven classes a day. I did that solidly for five years. And then about the next five years, I dropped two. So that was five. Now I thought I had done something from seven to five, right? But it still was a lot. Yeah. It's a lot, you know. Oh, yeah. I, mean, I was going strong, going strong. Now, within that time in the Washington DC area, I got married and I started and had my children. I have two beautiful daughters, Coach Cass and uh, Samantha, who um, you meet along the way there. We'll talk about her. But um, my two daughters were children when they came out. Uh, I, I, by the way, I don't want to miss this part. I broke my water teaching. Oh so my I, God, on the dance yes, floor. Yes, I was pregnant. I was saying, let's go, let's go. Come on, I can't <laughs> see you your boobs. And the people would be like, cooks, we don't want to have you have your baby. I said, no, no, don't worry about it. Boom, water broke. They go, your water broke. Now, what was my answer? Don't worry about it. Let's finish the class. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> don't worry about it. Let's finish the class. <laughs> then that's the passion I have in me, right? So we finished the class and I went to the to the hospital, had my baby, Coach Cass, did it again oh. another, year, another year. They are two years apart. I did it again, so went to, uh, broke my water and went to have some other. I felt like the, the workout pushed the, the babies out. Mm-hmm. So when they came, they knew nothing but the music, the dancing since they were children. And I used, they used to be my guinea pigs. <laughs> Literally, guinea yeah. pigs meaning, meaning I would line them up and I would say, I have a new routine, I have a new routine. And they'll be like, okay, mommy, okay. <laughs> and I put the music on and I'll be doing the routine and they'll be following me. Now, in the beginning, it was cool. But after a while, they as children were tired of it. <laughs> and they wouldn't go outside and play. <laughs> <laughs> they didn't want to do it anymore. So I heard Cassandra telling her sister, when mommy says that, how is it? Say, yes, it's okay. So we can go and play. <laughs> 
So they were like, mommy, we know. And, and they forgot that, hey, I'm the adult. I heard them. You heard so them. I said, no, we're gonna do it again. No, we're gonna do it again. No, we're gonna do it again. What happened? I, right in front of me, they had their dolls to play with, you know, as girls. I saw them line up their dolls doing the same thing. We have a routine. Let's go <laughs> get a new routine. <laughs> So they were teaching their dolls how to. <laughs> oh my gosh. So literally, they grew up dancing, mm-hmm. you know, and of course, uh, raising them there in America, I got to put them into a lot of activities and, you know, dance activities and sports, all the sports you can think of, they yeah. were in, you know, because I'm very athletic. I run, I run 100 meters for my school wow. in Ghana. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and my record was not bad at so 11.9. My record was not bad at all. Whoa, yeah, I need yeah, this yeah. kind so. of anointing. Speaking of your girls, so um, Coach Cass mentioned the last time we met at the retreat, just she gave us a glimpse of the story about your daughter and how one of them, how she was diagnosed, given two weeks to live, and then you did some magic. Please tell us the story. Okay. So my daughters were born literally healthy, very healthy babies. Nothing was wrong with none of them. At the age of 11, uh, my my youngest daughter, Kuchikasa's sister, Samantha, was diagnosed with lupus, lupus. And I said, what is this lupus? I don't know what it is. I have no idea. It's not in my family. It's not in ex-husband's family. What, what, what is it? You know, so then what happened? They, uh, they did the test and everything. And they said, oh, this kind of thing is going to deteriorate her. And I said, no, you're kidding me. No. So at the age of uh, 19, she ended up getting, uh, being crippled. She lost the use of her legs and literally her hands too because they were crippled. She got she, she uh, ended up in a wheelchair for close to two years and she was going from hospital to hospital to hospital. I literally shut my life off and went into hospitals with her just to get you know her to be healed, but it wasn't happening. And as she was losing ground, she was losing ground. She lost weight. She was literally 60 pounds. She was dying. And the doctors told me, you have only two weeks to bury your child. So why don't you go to the funeral parlor and make the arrangements for the funeral? I said, no, I refuse. In the name of Jesus, I refuse. And I fasted and prayed and God showed me a vision. And God said, Genesis 129, I created all the trees and the fruits and the vegetables, and this is what I need you to do. Give it to her. I took her out of the hospital, brought her home, and of course, everybody who, who, who knows that I'm not a doctor, <laughs> an MD, is saying, what are you doing? What are you doing? You're going to kill your daughter. No, I'm listening to somebody higher than me. I believe in the vision, the dream that he gave me and showed me what to do. And I went and bought a juicer and a blender and a water purifier, these three um, gadgets. I bought these three machines and I started juicing organic fruits, organic vegetables, mainly vegetables with one or two fruits in there because fruits are more sugar, but the vegetables have more vitamins, minerals, enzymes, and what to it. So I started using that. Again, listening to what God is telling me. Do you know that within the first week, her hand that was crippled started opening up and her leg, which was hanging just like my hand is, started getting a little stronger. First week. Second week, look, tears, we're crying with joy. We're like so emotional about it. Then she, her believing God is awesome, outstanding. She kept telling me, Ma, I'm going to walk again. Mama, I'm going to live. I'm going to walk again. And I said, how do you know that? Then she said, God told me. So I believe that he handled me and handled her. And brought 
the two together, you know, her sisters helping with juicing, you know, her dad, uh, friends, family, everybody's helping with juicing, getting her there. Second week, even better. Third week. So now, all these weeks, I'm telling you, within one month, she was, she, her feet were straight and her hands were opened out. And she had not eat, eaten anything at all except the juicing. So I took her off everything you can think of, every single food, muscle of food, I took her off of it. Nothing except water, pure water with a water hydrator. I gave her pure water to drink. I juiced for her and I made smoothies for her. And the smoothies were more vegetable with a little fruit in it as well as my guide told me. So do you know that that was the first month, her legs were out of the wheelchair, she could stand. And then now therapy begins. So the second month I'm still doing it. And then now he gives me this vision of salad, salad, like raw vegetable salad, like give her, give her the raw, let her eat it now. So she, before she was drinking, it, now let her eat it. So then I started giving her, you know, in, in my mind, salad would be the raw thing to give her. Exactly. You know? I started chopping it up and giving it to her. And, you know, and I have to tell you, she really didn't like the juices, but she would hold it and she would drink it. She would hold her nose and she would drink it. And she said, Mommy, I know I have to drink it. So she would just do it. Her sister cooks in here. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. So the second month, she could walk taking steps, walking without the wheel, went to a stick and then, and then came out of it. Now we thought we were done with now. She was a cripple. Now she's fine. Everything is okay. Then this lupus attacks again. Why? Because my daughter went backwards. She went back to eat the all the way. junk. Yes. You see, she had to keep it clean. Exactly. But she went back Yeah, And so the lupus came back again now she lost a kidney and uh, one of my sisters gave her a kidney because when you're on a kidney list, you could be there forever. So, you know, we were blessed with a kidney from one of my sisters and also the fact that she had been through literally, I mean, I, I don't want to be here telling you the list, but in my book, which I will refer you to, uh, she had gout, she had uh, the constipation from here to, you know, where she had so many surgeries, literally over and, and, and fibroids that were growing huge monstrous in her, her, her uterus. And, you know, the list is long of what my daughter had. The bottom line is we went through battle after battle after battle. But today she's 35 years old. She's wearing her heels. She's dancing. She's teaching. She has a kidney. And God almighty praise to him. She's fine. And she watches her diet. Now. She watches her diet. Yes. Yeah. That's a fantastic story. Like, and then of course, Coach Cass as well told us how she also used to be big. She used to hide yes. sugar food and then. Right, <laughs> right, right. And, and hers also came from her watching her sister die. Watching her sister die. And you remember when we had the meeting, I mean, the uh, session, I said that she, I didn't bring it in the house, but she would go to behind me to friends or somewhere and eat it. So then she was putting on weight and I was like, ah, I'm not feeding these children. What is going on? But her sweet tooth got her into that. But when yeah. she saw her sister dying and going through all this, she changed her life around, you know, and she's here to help people who are going through the same thing yeah. today. Yes. And speaking of which, like I am a mother of young kids as well. And we know that kids have sweet tooth. Like in your home, you didn't have all those cakes and stuff, but right. she managed to eat them anyway. How can we as mothers continue to feed our children healthy foods yet sweet so that, you know, they, they get well, they, they don't get sick? Anymore. Okay, so, so, so I'm going to correct you. I'm not saying they did not have sweets at all, but like Coach Cassis, I think her favorite was candy corn. Is this candy that has orange with a, a, a yellow top? Sweets, those kind of things she liked. Now, 
I would bake myself. I'm a good cook and I bake. My mom was also, you know, she baked breads and zucchinis and all kinds of stuff. So uh, I can bake and I would make uh, healthy cakes for them. As long as I made it and I knew the ingredients that went into it, it was fine. But when they went out and ate it in after party or somewhere else or you know, they're behind me, then of course I had no control over what was inside and what they were eating. And, and as children, they will, they will encounter that. They'll go out to a party or wherever and they'll eat something, but you can control what they, you feed them from your home. So the interest, the important thing is the ingredients like the sugar, okay? The sugar has to be brown sugar instead of white sugar because white sugar is bleached. Okay. And then the oils, you have to use oils. Like we talked about it a little bit, oils like olive oil, you know, grapeseed oil, uh, sunflower oil, avocado oil, instead of the vegetable oils, stuff like that. And then um, the other thing also is salt. Instead of just bringing any table salt in sea salt, sea salt is very, very important. Again, if you look at all the things I'm telling you, they came natural. The sea salt from the ocean, the sugar from the sugar cane, the honey, honey also is a good thing from the bees, you know, and even flour. In those days before today, um, bleached flour came along. They used to be spelt flour and flour that buckwheat flour, flour that was not bleached, Mm -hmm. you know. So these things you've got to go back to because they are healthier for our bodies. So if you use those things, bring it into your home, you can still make cakes and cupcakes for your children and uh, breads and however, whatever sweet stuff you want to make for them, even apple pie and stuff like that. You, you when we, when I make apple pie, I don't put sugar in it because mm-hmm. the apples are sweet That's, already. Or yeah. I make mango, mango pie. I've had mango pie. Oh, and lovely. when you make mango pie, the mango is so sweet. Yeah. So you don't need sugar. You know, these are the things that you, the mother can control for your children. Mm-hmm. Okay. It's so important what you bring into the house. If you know that you, you're going to bring a batch of cookies. Children love cookies. Yeah. When you bring the cookies into the house and it's one of those cookies you just got in some store with junk, they're going to eat it. Yeah. They don't know any better. They'll eat it. But what you do, you bake the cookies yourself. Mm-hmm. Now, if there's a store today in Ghana, we have more vegan and vegetarian, yeah. and more healthy, conscious places. So you can maybe order it from there. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so we have that, but you, you, today is easier than maybe before, but all I'm saying is go back to what it used to be before, mm-hmm. uh, stay away from preservatives, stay away from, um, you know, things that are not natural. Mm-hmm. If they are artificial, you don't want it. Mm-hmm. You want to go more to the natural so that you can keep your children healthy when they know that they grow up with it, they will continue with it. Yeah, that, that's that's really good. Thank you. Now let's talk about the woman in her 50s, 60s. You are in your 60s yourself and you actually look younger than me, but I'm <laughs> going to pretend I'm not embarrassed by that. <laughs> okay, we are sisters. How's that? <laughs> oh, you feel a little better. <laughs> Anyway, so for, for, I mean, you know, Ghanaians, for instance, we think that, or some of us think, oh, but we all know that that also comes with health issues. So these days, people are more conscious about their health. But yes. here is the case that maybe they've been enjoying all these amazing carbs, the fufu and banku for so long, <laughs> and suddenly they have yes. to start being healthy. How do they start right. that journey, especially after yes. 15? Yes. So this is a great question. So basically what it is, is when you grow older, your metabolism slows down. So, and we know that to be a fact because what happens is now all of a sudden your stomach is coming out and you're like, what is this? I never had a stomach before. All of a sudden, those who have sides, you know, they call them love handles, handles. It's all coming out. They're like, what is this? Or the kimono sleeves when you're <laughs> sitting. Kimono sleeves. Like, yeah, the kimono <laughs> sleeves, the arm that, that jiggles right in the yeah. triceps. You know, you're like, what is all this? Why can't I control this? What's going on? Because you're, when you were younger, you could burn it off fast. 
You see, it was there, but you could burn it off fast. So there was no time for that holding it there. Today, when you're older, 50, 60, you see it more now. Why? The metabolism is slowing down. So now you need to reverse things. Mm. Number one, I mentioned eating the correct things. Mm -hmm. Let's stop eating the white sugar and then replace it with brown sugar. I believe in replacement. Yeah. I, I, I know with my clients, when I take away something and you don't replace it, they'll no, go back to the thing you, exactly. yeah, because you didn't replace it. Exactly. So I believe in, okay, there was sugar. Now, what, what do I, can I have? I can have honey or I can have brown sugar. Okay, now in our fufu and what have you, and it's carbs related, a lot of carbs, the fufu, the, the kenke, the, you know, uh, the gari, the bangkun, they're all heavy carbs. Now, they are so good. I grew up with them. I love them. Yes. What do I do? I eat them during the day. I eat it during the day. I don't eat it at night. I don't eat it at night because at night, I am really not burning off yeah. much. And I have, my cutoff point is six o'clock. It all depends on your lifestyle. Yeah. So for somebody, it could be seven o'clock. Yeah. You know, you don't want it to go too, too late, like at nine o'clock and, yeah. and all that. But you at least want to cut it off earlier mm -hmm. so that you eat something lighter. Now, things like the chicken, the beef, the fish, those proteins, you can still eat it. Okay. They are digested easily. They are digested easily. So you can have that in the evening. But then in the evening, what you want to add, you can toss beautiful array of vegetables. vegetables like, yeah. like today we did it. You cut up your carrots, your corn, your, your uh, green beans, you know, your um, uh, zucchini, your, you know what I mean? Like a, an array of vegetables. And then you can toss it nicely, either in a, a little good oil that I mentioned, mm -hmm. or you can even just toss it with water, mm -hmm. but with spices and yeah. give it a little flavor. Even you can yeah. eat that with your protein. Now, you see, there's no carbs uh, there. At that time, there's yeah. no carbs there. You see, I've changed it. Now, during the day, yes, I will eat my fufu, my banku, my what have you. Now, another thing is portions. Yeah. portions we talked about somebody might go for rice maybe a big bowl of rice and oh this was so good so they go again <laughs> and they go again and what's going on what's going on now you see what it is we've got to learn how to discipline ourselves to cut it down the portions have got to really be minimized we yeah. cannot be piling it on because that also take a, takes a toll on our body. Yeah. So I don't say give up your fufu or your you know, local foods. No, I say turn it around. Don't eat it at night. Eat it during the day. We have 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. that the sun is out. That's how I look at it. Yeah. 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can eat it. After 6 p.m., there's still some more time through the night before you go to bed. Yeah. And you want to make sure that you eliminate the carbs that's going to turn into sugar. Mm. Mm. You want to eliminate that. So if you can do that, you see the balance in your body. The other thing is exercising. Mm -hmm. Whilst, you're, whilst you're, you're minding the food and how to to um, take that food and proportion it. You're also considering exercising. You want to do 15 minutes of exercise every day. Cardio okay. maybe um, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, something like that. And in between a Tuesday and a Thursday, you want to add strength training to it. Strength training, we need it as much as we need cardio to okay. get the balance mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. body. So you need to do both. There are lots of women I meet and they say things like, oh, I don't like these weights and I don't like all this cal calisthenics and all this <laughs> strength training. And I say, okay, but sweetheart, you need it. You need it because it's a right arm and a left arm. They go together. Yeah. The card goes with the strength training. Yeah. One cannot be in one without the other. You've got to do both. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much for sharing that. And I discovered you through YouTube. So I know you oh. have a YouTube channel with 
many followers, like subscribers, <laughs> and your yes. video, some of your videos have millions of views. I'm like, this is my <laughs> so even to have the opportunity to talk to you now, I feel really privileged. I also know that you've written four books. So please tell us about your books and then your programs and how we can okay. access them. Okay. So yes, uh, my books, I have four books and I started with, the first one is African Health Secrets. Mm. And I named it African Health Secrets because some of the secrets that I'm, I'm sharing uh, are maybe, they are medicinal, yeah. but they could also be done in Kenya or South Africa or some other con, you know, uh, country in the, on the continent. Therefore, I called it African Health Secrets. Yeah. But having grown up in Ghana, I learned most of my Ibibidru and you know how we do things yeah. here in Ghana. My great grandmother lived in her hundreds, you know. Wow. So yeah, in the village. So she was one who, oh, I have a headache. She'll tell you to drink hot water. Oh, I have a stomachache. She'll say, this is the leaf. Go and bring it. Now I'm then, you know, you drink it. Or, oh, my, you know, it's hurting me. And then and another thing they did for us, we did enemas. They used to, to give us enemas mm -hmm. with the benchia. <laughs> they used to give us enemas with the benchia every Saturday. They would give it to us and with the ginger, you know. Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, my God. And then we would drink cod liver oil. That's okay. another thing. Mm -hmm. And so we were healthy. We were growing up so healthy. We couldn't, we didn't get sick. Now, today they call it detoxing your body. Detox, yeah. so, yes. so detoxing is key. Yeah. Detoxing is key to staying away from being sick all the time. Yeah. If you can detox your body, you know, we eat all kinds of foods and all of that, regardless if it's healthy or not, you need to detox, clean and sweep your body yeah. so that you don't get toxins built up in there to yeah. get sick. Because yeah. once you get the toxins, then you have a headache, then yeah. you have an ache, a pain here, then you have, you know, all kinds of things start coming up. Yeah. you know and so that's another reason why the detoxing is very important mm -hmm. so this is uh, all that is in my book uh -huh. so i wrote the african health secrets also because my daughter samantha had the lupus mm -hmm. and i wanted to help people and to share with them how uh how I, through God, healed this child, you know. And then Cassandra, Coach Cass is also in the book because she's also uh, motivating people about how you don't have to be, you know, heavy and big and all. You can, you can lose that weight. Yeah. You can keep a healthy weight, yeah. you know. It's yeah. not everybody that will be skinny, skinny. Exactly. But even if you are a little bit, you know, heavy because you are heavy bone, but you're healthy. Healthy is the key. The underlying cause is healthiness. So if you can have that foundation of health, then it doesn't matter because I've seen beautiful girls with a, a beautiful boomsy, yeah. you know, with a, with a nice right, like this. And, and they're not skinny, skinny, but they're healthy. healthy. You know, so, so that's the whole, whole thing. So my book uh, tells you that it also gives you remedies. Remedies like, okay, so I have a headache. What should I do? I have a... Uh, instead of running to the pharmacy, mm -hmm. you know, the pharmacy, 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 we can eliminate that and go the natural way. So yeah. I have a headache, I have a stomachache, and even women who have their period, period. you know, what should yeah. they do and what should they take, you know? And so I use all the natural um, ingredients and explain what resolves what, you yeah. know, in my book of um, African health secrets. And I encourage them also with the eating. Um, so the chapters in their covers pretty much health, fitness, and, and wellness, Okay, that book. And, and the medicinal, natural medicinal remedies are all in there. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. So that's- Somewhere down the line, I would do uh, a second edition to the book, but this is my first edition. That's my first book. My second book is called African Dance with Passion. Mm. And the reason is because my passion is dance. I started by telling you I'm a linguist and I went to school for it. And by now I should have been translating for the presidents and who, what have you, but my dancing pulled me this way. Yeah. So I wanted to explain what passion, what, I'm sorry, what dance means and why 
it is my passion, mm. you know, and uh, that book has a lot more chapters. It breaks down the whole entire movement of dance wow. and it explains and it gives you different dances from all over the continent and explaining like the Ethiopians move their shoulders, yeah. the South Africans kick high, the West Africans move their hips and their waist and their boomsy, right, right, you know, so that book it's about dance, mm. uh, passion of dance. Then I have two other books. These two other books I wrote because I'm a personal trainer mm. and I, I was training my clients and they were always asking, how do I lose the weight? How do I, what do I eat? I decided to put it all as a program. Okay. So it's a three month program. Okay. And the two books are Kua Vizuri and Kua Inafa. They are both Swahili. For Kua Vizuri in Swahili means to be well, okay. not to be sick, to be well. And then Kua Inafa in Swahili means to be fit. Mm. Yeah. And so I tailored the Kua Vizuri after my daughter once again and after autoimmune diseases and sicknesses out there and how you can use nutrition yeah. to turn it around for you. So it's a very good book. It takes you step by step by step. We start in your kitchen, how to get rid of things in your kitchen, clean out your kitchen, what to bring into your kitchen and how to now start living a brand new healthy lifestyle Fantastic. day by day for three months. Yeah. Then the last one is the Kua Inafa. It's really tailored after me. People say, so Kukua, how is it that you're in your 60s and you look like this? And I say, let me tell you how. Mm -hmm. So for three months, I take them through the same thing from the kitchen to going shopping, what you need to, to buy and eat and, and detox and how to stay the way I am, both inside and outside. Did you know that even the sapo that we use in Ghana, like the fish net, is a detoxer? Uh -huh. Uh -huh. It's a detoxer. You are detoxing, you are detoxing and shedding each time you you put it like a, like a loofah, as they would call it, and you're sort of scrubbing it mm -hmm. and shedding off the dead skin each time you do that. Mm -hmm. Wow. And then your fitness programs as well. Yes. So our fitness, my fitness program is Kukua Fitness. Mm -hmm. And my Kukua being a fancy, Kukua is K-U-K-U-A, but I put my W in because I wanted to trademark it. Yeah. So Kukua, that way is trademarked. And uh, fitness is uh, covers the whole entire wellness, health, you know, food, nutrition, the whole Naya. So and um, it's called Kukua Fitness on all our social media handles. So on YouTube, if you type in Kukua Fitness, you're going to get it. Instagram at Kukua Fitness. Facebook, uh, Kukua Fitness. Where else? In, uh, LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Um, Twitter. TikTok. You're on TikTok. Yes, 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 yes. yes. And we're, we're, we just started TikTok. It's new for us. So mm -hmm. we're sort of growing it now. But yeah, everything that's out there that's, you know, uh, the world needs to, can reach out and needs to know, we're on there. Our website is kukwafitness.com. Mm. So everything is Kukwa Fitness. And then we have, proud to say we have a, a platform and an app that you can actually go to. It's called kukwafitness.com slash workout online. Okay. So if you put that in and say workout online, you subscribe to it, you get three days free, and then you subscribe to it. It's very affordable, and you're going to get literally 10 categories on there. We have uh, the Kukwa Fitness Dance, which you took a part of. We have strength training to encourage people to dance, dance and work out, yeah. doing the strength training yeah. with the music. Yeah. We have Mama, Mama Baby. We have Kukwa Mama Baby series, and my okay. goddaughter... Is on their Cree, who also shows you the before and after. Yeah. You know, when I was with the children, there was no social media then. Mm -hmm. So, <laughs> yeah. but we have my goddaughter, she shows it. Then we have a Tasty Town, which is healthy. We have a chef from Kenya who shows you the healthy way of cooking. Wow. We have a vegan chef also who takes you through the videos of 
cooking healthy vegan way. Then we have choreography. If you like to choreograph, Cassandra teaches you Afrobeat choreography. Then we also have uh, breaking down all the different kukua moves so you can dance, dance with us. With yourself. And then yeah. last but not the least, uh, I am on there giving you kukua fitness tips. tips. Yeah. That's such, yeah. that's so lovely. And I love that You've trademarked the name and then Boopsy as well, right? I think oh, I yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. So being a linguist, I have to tell you that very quickly. Being a linguist, I was looking for a slogan that would be catchy. Exactly. Now remember, Suzuki Wally, nothing is simple, right? <laughs> So I said, okay, what is it going to be? What is it going to be? And I went through all the languages that literally in the world, and I'm looking at them, the ones I can read, and I'm saying, okay, this is not so cute. Even in our own fancy, it it's not cute. You know, it's not cute. <laughs> or even in God, do now, or, you know, it's not cute. So I said to myself, which is cute? Caribbean came along, uh -huh. boomsy. Boom. And that was like so cute, ah. so yeah, so catchy. But once again, in order for me to trademark it, I had to spell it differently. Yeah. So mine is B O O M B S E Y, ah, boom. and it's trademark boom C, and it's trademark yeah. just for Kukua Fitness. Yeah. So when I say move your boom C, it's not even only the butt or the buttocks, but it is your entire core, core. your entire core from from you know your uh, the, the, the your um right waist all the way down, actually your rib cage. Yeah. all the way down to your boomsy, your butt. So you're moving that and entire core. And for African dance, as you know, West yeah. African dance, yeah. we like to move yeah. that boomsy and it really, really resonates well with it. Oh, yes. fantastic. What a beautiful interview. You just made me laugh and you walked <laughs> me through that. Like, I feel like I was just following you along. <laughs> I love that you've lived. You know, I love it when people live. It's, it's beautiful. So go on and tell us about the African trips as well. Okay. So, uh, so in retrospect, what it is, is the African dance is us taking you to Africa through music and dance without your passport. So yeah. if you dance with us in a, in a session like we did with your session, we did dance in place, right? Yeah. Without a passport, but we traveled and went to Kenya and Tanzania and all these other places in place. Yeah. But then what happened, we actually started taking people to Africa with their passports and we created Af Africa with us. Mm -hmm. So there's another uh, site, africawithus.com, but you can also get that through Kukua Fitness. Yes. Yes. Okay. So africawithus.com. And what we did, we started really from the US and there is Europe also, but we bring people over here who have never been here and where we're giving them uh, an opening, you yeah. know, uh, to Africa, opening their minds, you know, introducing them to Africa since being there, maybe they've gotten the wrong information about Africa. Mm -hmm. So it's not only culture, but our food, our people, you, you know, our environment, you know, our languages. And so we bring the people over and then we also do community service. Oh. So we go into the villages, we go and help orphanages and schools and, you know, um, women who, yeah. uh, for, all, for all we know, even need help with pads and stuff like that. You know, we go deep. We really go in school fees and school uniforms and flip-flops and books and pens and oh. the list is long. So we do all that and we give back. We even went as far as giving uh, water to villages, to building toilets for, wow. for schools and stuff like that. And this... this um, part of what we do is called Africa with us foundation. foundation. So that foundation is separate, but yet still is still the same because it's under the same umbrella of Kukua fitness. Yeah. That is, it's, it's by itself a foundation so people can donate mm -hmm. 
So when they want to, they just go to africawithusfoundation.com and donate. And what we do, their money goes to help all these people. And when we bring the groups over, it's connected because we go out to the villages so they can see what their money is are doing. And we send videos also back to the people to see what their money is are doing. We've, we've furnished like NEMA projects with computers and, and stuff like that, you know, so that the children can get off the street and, and make something out of their life you know so i'm proud to say and that's really something that makes me and my children very proud is the fact that we give back to africa yeah. and it's not only ghana we cover literally all the 54 co countries in the continent as long as there is political rest we do our homework we make sure and we take them safely yeah. you know yeah. so we take them and our groups are by anywhere from 20 to about 30, you know, so we can handle them, you know, yeah. but people have been coming, we've been doing this for the past eight years. Wow. And uh, now with COVID going down and everything getting better, we're, we're picking up again and bringing people more and more to the continent. We brought people who have also come to stay, mm -hmm. who have actually moved here because we've enlightened them and, you know, introduced them to Africa yeah. and who we are. Fantastic. Yes. That is a great thing you're doing. Thank you. And before I let you go, I have three short questions. So yes. what, what happens is I read the phrase and then you complete it for me. Okay. okay. The first okay. one is, if I could advise my younger self in one short sentence, I would say... If I could, uh, if I could advise myself in one short... My younger self in yes. one uh, short sentence would be... I, I think that our adults that have been there, done that, are people we should listen to. When we are younger, we don't. We tend not to listen to the older. We say, oh, no, no, so on that. You know what? They don't know what else to them. So we don't. And then finally, we, we, we sort of walk their footsteps and repeat what they've done. And then they don't want to say, I told you so. But they sit back and say, ah, you know. So for me, for a younger kukua, I would say to listen to the adults, those who've been there, done that, seen it, you experienced it, you should listen to what they tell you and apply it to your life because you will avoid certain things by yeah. doing that. Yeah, beautiful, thank you. The second question is, I am fabulous because... <laughs> I am fabulous because I take very good care of myself. I am fabulous because I know how to detox, eat right, exercise, take my supplements and motivate everybody to do the same. Yeah. And you do, you really do. I mean, let me tell you, um, since we came back from the retreat, I mean, we just got to the house and I told my kids, okay, no more eating carbohydrates after 6 p.m. No more bread, <laughs> no more. <laughs> right, I mean, right. God, for one week, we've been able to do that in this house. So thank you. You're oh, good. People. Good. Oh, good. Oh, good, good. It becomes a lifestyle. When yes. it becomes a lifestyle, yes. it's easier to handle. Yes. You know, like I said, we're not saying don't do it at all. We're just saying That's at a certain true. time. Yeah. The next day you can bring it back. Exactly, you know? exactly. Yes. I love that. Okay, my final question is, one book that has greatly helped me in business is? Huh. One book that has helped me is Rich Dad, Poor Dad. <laughs> Rich Dad, Poor Dad. I like the concept of the whole book. Mm -hmm. For me, it turned <clears throat> my passion into financial success. And... Uh, it, I found that knowledge is truly powerful. You see, what we don't know, then we do whatever. Exactly. But when you, you know and, and you can turn what you know. For me, I'm going to speak for myself. My passion, I turned my passion. Now, remember, that's not what I went to school for. Mm -hmm. People ask me, Kukua, you didn't go to Juilliard. You didn't go to, you know, all this whatever schools for dance. No, I never went to a dance school, but look at what I actually, it's my passion for dance. That is my financial success. Mm -hmm. Rather, okay, my linguistics that I went to school with, I would have still been out there doing translations, doing interpreting and working for somebody 
working for somebody. I'm going to get but a certain amount of money. Okay. I will never be rich with that. But now with my passion, rich dad, poor dad has taught me that I can actually take my passion and turn it into financial success. That's a book. That I love it too. I it's love it. Thank you so much, Kukwa. You are amazing. You are young at heart. You give freely and you're so humble. That's something I meant to say from the oh, first day I met you. Because, you know, I was coming to meet this big star and I was worried. I mean, you've been on Oprah, you've been on Essence, <laughs> everywhere. I'm like, how is she going to be? Is she going to talk to people like me? And But you were so down to earth. And Coach Cass, I was like, oh, they are so lovely people. Oh, God bless oh. you. And also, God bless you for making your products and services available to the rest of us you know even on your youtube channel the content alone is rich and people can access that for free bless you so so much oh, for all that you're doing and also bringing people to africa so that they see the beautiful yes, of us. yes. that's the media houses don't report <laughs> you yes. know yeah, thank I you know. so much and we wish you the very best as you keep growing your business and touching lives we love you kukwa thank you so, so thank much. you thank you thank you it has been my pleasure and i've enjoyed this interview as if i was just talking to my best friend oh you know? I just okay. like a lay back and just talking to my best friend. We're chit-chatting. Yeah. Uh, you know, I tell my daughters when we are going live, they're all like, oh, okay, okay, we're going live. We're freaking out. And I'm laid back. They're like, Ma, why are you laid back? We're going live. <laughs> and it's because <laughs> I'm so I'm so relaxed. Exactly. But with you, it was like we were here just sitting in a, in, in our couch, just chit-chatting. And I really, really appreciate you. And thank you for giving me this invite and giving me the opportunity to share my vision and my passion with, and I'm sure not only Ghana, but you know, wherever you play it on YouTube, the whole world will hear it. But I will not stop until I have reached out there, way out there beyond my imagination and helped people stay fit, stay healthy and stay well. Yes. And that's a beautiful vision. Thank you so much. Oh my God. Was that a wonderful interview or what? I loved talking with Kukwa. She's amazing. Really, can you believe she's 63? But you know what? When I see her, it makes me know that, look, Amma, all things are really possible. And I love that she loves God and she keeps talking about how God has helped her. You know, the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. This is proof, ladies. So there is hope for us. You know, we don't all have to be skinny like her, but we can also stay fit like mine. See mine. <laughs> But I hope you enjoyed the interview. I hope you took away so much. I mean, every time I sit at her feet, I learn something. Like I was saying, now we don't do carbohydrates after 6 p.m. Hopefully, I didn't steal myself and do it yesterday. I think I did. But like we have the discipline coming in place nicely in my home. And then today, I also learned a few other things. And I hope you did as well. Please share in the comments if any of what Kukwa said spoke to you. She's given us her website and the different programs and books as well. Please let's access them. Let's invest in ourselves. Get healthy because we got to be alive to do all these wonderful, fabulous things that we need to do for the glory of God. So I hope you've been blessed. Please, if this video has blessed you, share it with someone else and bless them as well. Let them know that all things are possible indeed through Christ who strengthens us. Until I come your way again, God willing, next week, Tuesday, same time, 12 noon GMT on YouTube. It's ta and don't forget to subscribe. <laughs>